Welcome to Movie Speeching. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take good care. Spree is the name of the movie. Please like and subscribe to get every update. For many years, a guy named Kurt has been trying to become famous online. He does all sorts of things on his Cuts World 96 channel, including Draw My Life videos, games, shoe reviews, and discussions about his favorite keyboard shortcuts. It also shows his father, Chris, who works as a DJ and was divorced from Kurt's mother a long time ago. Because his mother was very sad about this, Kurt decided to be a good son and live with her while earning money to babysit. No matter how much he recorded, Kurt failed to find a loyal audience for his videos, with his video count never reaching double digits. This is very different from Bobby and his channel Bobby Basecamp, a kid whom Kurt Kurt babysat and is now a famous influencer. Kurt considers himself Bobby's friend, but Bobby tolerates him and keeps him away from his cameras. After 10 years of unsuccessful live streaming, Kurt is reaching his breaking point and is ready to give his channel one last chance with content he calls lessons, aimed at teaching people how to attract an audience online. He started by stuffing a bunch of cameras and a bunch of water bottles into his car, saying that was the first step in the lesson. If you don't record yourself, you simply don't exist. This car will be used by Kurt as a driver for a car sharing app called Spree, and the first passenger he picks up is a man who refuses to wear a seatbelt and is wary of the camera, but Kurt just told him that they were for protection. This guy also preaches the gospel of white supremacy and Kurt is worried that this racism might harm his live audience, which is currently just Bobby, so he start driving a little more recklessly. The guy complained, but Kurt just encouraged him to drink his free bottle of water. It turned out that the water was poisoned, and Kurt even made a video showing how to do it without getting caught. Kurt then turned on some music and sped through the stop sign as the man died in the back seat, giving up his life. Kurt's only bystander, Bobby, thinks the murder was just an act of making a point, but Kurt is okay with that because it's part of lesson. Initially, no one can say that what he does is real because he wants to be seen as much as possible. Many were carried out without detection to attract maximum attention on the road. Kurt's next passenger is a quick-witted real estate agent who leaves a sign in the trunk. After some small talk, she goes to get a bottle of water of her choosing, quickly becoming Kurt's second killer. Kurt headed to the back seat to show off his body for the cameras and even joked that he could use some water too. Soon after, Chris calls Kurt to ask him for a ride, but Kurt hangs up. He then covered his tracks. He unlocked the woman's phone with her dead face and gave himself five stars on the ride app, after which he replied a text with a rude message so that woman will not be expected in a work meeting. After disposing of the body, Kurt picks up his next passenger, a rude idiot named Mario. Kurt tries to play some of his music, but Mario complains. He also refused to touch the free water. Kurt then took a detour to pick up another passenger, ignoring Mario's complaints because he was the one who chose the general option. The passenger was a famous comedian and influencer named Jesse, who canceled the trip as soon as she heard Mario hit her and left. Mario pushes Kurt to follow her and Kurt offers to give her a free ride just to get her in the car. While driving, Kurt heard that she had a large following and asked how she did it, to which she replied that she was simply being funny. Kurt then continued to ask for help and Mario continued to flirt with her with extremely inappropriate comments, so Jesse recorded everything on social media before leaving the car, fed up with these two creepy guys harassing her. Now Kurt is upset about losing his chance to make friends with a truly influential successful person, so he suddenly changes his route and takes Mario to a remote construction site. He drove so fast that Mario started to feel nauseous, and Kurt made him get out of the car to avoid vomiting all over the seat. Mario complains, but leaves anyway because he needs to go to the bathroom, and at that moment, Kurt plays his song at full volume and accelerates into Mario with his car, sending his body flying over the car and landed on the front window for some time. Perfect angle for the camera. After disposing of Mario's body and cleaning the car, Kurt follows Jesse on her social media and sees that she has a stand-up show that night. He took this as a sign, saying that he and Jesse were two big things that happened on the same night. Kurt isn't big yet because he still has a single-digit viewership and his only boss is Bobby, who still thinks the murders are fake. This is because he is a very fake creative person. He always plays pranks on homeless people and one time he was supposed to help them, it was all in front of the cameras. This has nothing to do with Jesse, who is loved by everyone for her honesty and authenticity. Moments later, Kurt stops at a gas station, where he takes off the real estate agent sign and fills up on gas while while arguing with Bobby, who tells him that he is boring and that he should spice up the broadcast. You are direct. After the blood has been wiped off the car, Kurt tries to spice things up like Bobby said by driving recklessly for his next passengers, a trio of socialites consisting of Richard, Kendra, and London. At first, Richard and Kendra were scared of the way Kurt drove, but London became excited because she felt like she was going on an adventure and jumped into the front seat to chat with Kurt. Finally, Kurt pulled over again and drove the
the trio to a junkyard, telling Richard and Kendra to hang up the sunroof because it had a beautiful view, perfect for social media photos. Richard and Kendra play along and have fun, but Kirk starts driving faster and suddenly closes the sunroof, trapping the next victims while his song plays in the background. Just then, stray dogs from the junkyard attack Richard and Kendra for food, and Kirk takes an electric drill he kept in the car to kill London. Afterwards, Kirk took the car to the car wash and called Bobby for advice, but unfortunately he did not see Kirk's triple murder. In fact, he stopped watching the live stream because he didn't care about Kurt. Kurt demands to know why Bobby hasn't yelled at him like he promised, and Bobby tells him he should be more like Jesse because she seems genuine. Kurt checks Jesse's social media again, but his jealousy causes him to comment harshly in the most annoying ways, like saying that she didn't even film her story vertically. While Kurt bitterly goes to a house in the suburbs, Jesse posts a video she took in the car to burn Mario and Kurt alive, then she visits her grandmother to take good care of her while recording the video to his social media. Suddenly, the doorbell rang and she felt nervous because they weren't expecting anyone, but only a comedian Mike, who wanted to discuss work-related matters. It turns out Kurt is visiting Bobby, who tells Kurt to leave because they aren't collaborators or friends, and this is all said on camera for fans to hear on his stream. Bobby insults Kurt when he approaches for help, and Bobby's fans end up accessing Kurt's live stream to see the other side of the argument. Kurt suddenly stabs Bobby with a knife when his streams finally reach double digits. Bobby tries to defend himself with a gun, but after some difficulty, Kurt overpowers and kills him, although the audience thinks it was all fake. Kurt posted triple digits while hosting his live stream on Bobby's feed, and even recorded himself taking a shower to get rid of all the blood and going through Bobby's belongings. Soon after, her father texted her that he needed to take her to a concert. At first, Kurt didn't want to help because he wanted to go see Jesse's show, but when Chris mentioned that he was going to meet a famous DJ, the cat recognized the name and Kurt jumped at the chance. Kurt comes to pick up Chris and their father-son relationship is awkward, quickly leading them to argue. Chris is shocked to find Bobby's gun in the car and scolds his son for it, which only starts another fight that only stops when they have to hide the guns because the police are nearby. When they finally get to the club, they meet a famous DJ named Uno and ask her if she can tag Kurt's channel in the message. At first she says no, but then she gets tired of being there and agrees to scream if Kurt drives her to a taco truck. Finally, they find a taco truck and Uno asks Kurt to take a picture of her and wait in line for her as part of the deal. The line is quite long so Kurt often shares disgusting stories to scare customers. Meanwhile, Uno looks around the car and finds the gun that Kurt took from Bobby, which she uses as a prop to take selfies. She then drinks water, but it turns out to be one of Kurt's special drinks and she immediately passes out. When Kurt returned to the car with the food, Uno was a corpse and he quickly threw away the water bottle. Unfortunately, this attracted the attention of the police, who arrived and asked Kurt to perform a field sobriety test while Kurt pretended that Uno was his girlfriend and that she just fell asleep. Suddenly, Uno woke up because she was not drunk enough to die. Seeing the police, she panicked and shot one before running away. One of the policemen chases her, and when Kurt takes the opportunity to escape in his car, he is followed. All this increased his live viewership to five figures. Desperate to lose the police, Kurt starts driving like crazy and ends up crashing into a homeless camp, intentionally killing a few freeloaders before his car breaks down. Meanwhile, Jesse is taken to her show by Mike, who keeps bothering her and saying he has all kinds of connections. This guy also opened a small show in front of her, but did not make any of the audience laugh. However, the audience immediately goes crazy when Jesse takes over the stage and Kurt is hiding in the corner with his gun. After a few casual jokes, Jesse talked about her spree experience with Mario and Kurt, saying that Kurt's lack of social media followers made her reflect. Happiness is not found in a large number of subscribers, and no matter how many views you have, you will only be judged and hated for the entertainment of others. She ended her performance by smashing her phone on stage, ending her social media addiction with a mic drop and shocking everyone. Moved by his speech, Kurt decides to leave without causing any damage, only to learn that spree service is temporarily suspended due to his murderous behavior. Kurt goes through another app called GoGo -Go and gets into the car of a friendly man named David, who quickly jokes about not being the crazy driver who killed people all night. Kurt does this himself and without hesitation kills David in seconds. Back at the bar, Jesse is tired of dealing with Mike, who won't stop recording her even after she quits social media, and she decides to ditch him by calling GoGo. -Go. David's car arrives, but Kurt is the driver, and he reveals to Jesse that he was the previous driver she taunted on her set. He also told her that he was on her show, so he knew she wouldn't be able to use her phone to get help because she broke it. Thinking that Jesse is helpless, Kurt informs her that he will take her to his house so they can express their love instead of hatred, but Jesse retaliates with a phone charger and strangles him until the car crashes to a trash can. Kurt angrily stops the car and responds by punching Jesse, knocking her unconscious. He then led her to the grass, where he dragged her body into his headlights. He questioned the public 
public about what they should do with her, and the observers chose to kill her. Kurt prepares to criticize her when viewers spam the chat. However, when he stops to adjust a drop camera, he loses sight of Jesse so he leaves the car to look for her while the cat calls out to him for his foolish actions. It turns out the audience was right. Jesse took the opportunity to get in the car and drive, immediately using the car to run Kurt over. However, she loses control and her driving causes the car to crash right next to her house, and Kirk has enough room to dodge it. He then tries to kill Jesse by pressing her face into an airbag, but Jesse pushes him away and Kirk flees to another room. When Jesse said during the live stream that she needed help and tried to convince them that it was true, Chris also arrived and was shocked to see the house destroyed and Kirk's mother dead on the floor. It is later revealed that she was Kirk's first victim. He killed her off screen just before leaving to teach a lesson. Suddenly, Kurt goes outside and takes Bobby's gun from his car, which he then shoots his father multiple times, quickly killing him. Meanwhile, Jesse tries to escape in the car, but when reversing doesn't work, she simply drives forward and pins Kurt against the wall. The cat tells her to check the body, and Jesse does so only to discover that Kurt is not dead. She is forced to finish the job by hitting him in the head with her phone while a flashback to the previous few minutes shows Kurt feeling like a champion because he had 50,000 people following Follow Me. The cat then asked to take a selfie with the body and Jesse agreed. In the following days, Kurt's case spread widely. Jesse eventually became more famous than ever as a multimedia queen, and even though Kurt was despised by all journalists, he was still admired by some of the dirtier elements of the internet like 4chan and Reddit. Considered a hero, as these forums were filled with admiration for Kurt, one user revealed that he was making a movie about him called Spree. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.